What is going on, CHWA Nation? This is ring announcer Dilly here with another episode of Radio Recap. A little R&R with CHWA. And, as always, here with me is my co-host, Mr. True Exodus 7, Mr. Chris Exodus. Say hello to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? It is your boy, True Exodus 7 here. And, Dilly, that was, in fact, a callback. And we are here with some R&R. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe this is Radio Recap Episode 3. Oh, it is Episode 3. What am I doing? <laughs> it's not Episode 2. It's Episode 3. Episode, episode 2 with us together, I guess. Yeah, Episode 2 with us together. Episode 1 is uh, me and Angelo Grimsley with the pay-per-view. Yuck. Uh, and speaking of things that make me say yuck, let's get right into this show. Let's get into this past Sunday, Dilly. Let's get I, in straight to it. I believe it was Sunday, April the 10th, 2022. Beautiful day. It was like 70 degrees outside. It was a good day for wrestling, but unfortunately, unfortunately, what wasn't gorgeous and what did not make me happy was the first thing we see on the show here comes GM Victoria. Dilly, tell the I, people what you said. I don't even think I got to announce the opening of the show. I think the GM immediately came out, started running her mouth, said because of last week, uh, she just wasn't just didn't like Dragon's Guild getting into their into new foundation affairs. And so as punishment, Dragon's Guild had to face each other chris exodus and l ride facing off with a special guest ref l refo l refo indeed dilcifer jones but let me tell you something this match this was a fun one this was good i thought this was one of the best matches of the night and i'm it, not just saying that because i'm in it 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 really was it was a really good match between you guys i it's one of those I didn't like that uh, the GM was punishing you, but I'm not going to lie. That's not really a punishment to open up our show with a banger match between two of some of the best wrestlers in our company. And both myself and I'll ride repping our new T-shirts, my shoes are waist shirt, his one man zoo shirt. Yeah, uh, that is very true. That uh, had, to, had to do a little shameless plugging whenever we started the Absolutely. show. Absolutely. But. This this match was very entertaining to watch because you you and your brother L Ride don't get to wrestle very often against each other unless it's special special cases like this where somebody thinks it's punishment or maybe it's John Holt night one. It, it doesn't happen too often. And you know, there was another somewhat participant in this match, the fiercest white belt ever. Ah yes, yeah, Super Bob. Super Bob. Super Bob gets dragged in the corner and hell right as always. Not 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 a fan of your fun and tactics. No, I I tell you what, Dilly, it's not a gimmick. It's not for the crowd. You have been around me and L Ride outside of wrestling. He hates everything fun. Especially if I am on the forefront of the fun. He he really does. It's it it's fun to watch his reactions to what you are doing. Probably not fun for him, but it's definitely fun for me. I think it's fun for the entire CHWA nation. But, of course. You know, this, this match got started with uh, you guys doing some technical wrestling, some lockups, some headlocks. Just, of course. Just, just doing some typical Dragon's Guild style wrestling. Of course. I mean, I, th I think it's no secret in the CHWA that All Right and I, I don't want to toot our own horns here. I don't want to sound like I have an ego because Dilly, as you know, I truly don't. But All Right and I, man, we've been in this game a long time. Technical wrestling is right up our alley. We both love technical wrestling. I actually bust out an old move in this match. I uh, did a leapfrog to a back elbow. I haven't busted that out since way before the surgery happened. I'm not going to lie. So, I was I was waiting for the Chris Exodus standard, you know, get him in in the chin headlock and then bah, get him right in front of the face. I was going to do that, Dilly, but you got to think, if you're expecting that, my older brother, of course, is going to be expecting that. Oh, very, very much so. And I, I noticed there was some banter between you guys and uh, El Refo with this. Yeah... Yeah, El Refo, he uh, 
He wasn't what I thought he was, Dilly. I thought El Refo was going to be fun. I thought it was right up the alley of a Chris Exodus match. But obviously that wasn't to be, but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. I mean, yeah, this match was truly, you know, skill on both ends, speed versus strength, wittiness versus brute force. I mean, it's it's a great match. And it, we both known for our kicks. We're both known for our flips. This was a really fun match. It really was. And, you know, uh, do, uh, do we do we want to go ahead and address, you know, you, you, you mentioned it, El Refo, thinking he was a friend, but in fact he was. Do we just want to get into get into get into the end of this match or towards the end of this match? Well, Dilly, you see, El Ride has this move, it's the spin kick. I actually forget the moniker uh, that it that he's been using for it. He just recently switched it from the spin kick. Is it is it How- the tor- the tornado? It's not the tornado kick, is it? No, I I can't remember what it is. So he uh he won't be very happy with me that I forgot. No, he's, but he's definitely gonna he yell has, at us both for it. He has this very impressive spin kick, and uh, myself, I have the starlight kick, and you know it's not very often that you see all right and I go at it. So we both go, of course, for. I go for the starlight kick. All right goes for the spin kick. One of the most impressive moves in his arsenal, and. Uh, Dilly, I'm going to be honest, uh, after the match was over, we both realized uh, we both hit each other right below the belt, managed to just both, you know what, yep. I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, language warning, kicked each other right in the dick. Yep, right, right, right in the no-no square, but you guys both down, going, I was like, ah, we both kicked each other, not, not good, why did we do this? The ref goes to count you guys for the 10 count. And goes one, ten. Ring the bell, and rings the bell without giving it a full ten count. Laughing hysterically, pulls off the mask, and it's Angelo Grimsley. Angelo Grimsley had been refing your match the entire time, playing along like you guys had never n- noticed a bit. Out to them because we were in really bad way. I mean, what is it? Five, six on one, five on one, I believe. Yeah, five as on Harlock, one. As Harlock was nowhere to be found this week until after the show, but we're getting ahead of ourselves, of course, like yeah. we always do. Dil- <laughs> just get, like just we getting always a do. little. Well, by by this point, the fans have probably seen the video on our Facebook. You know, after the after the show with Harlock, but if you haven't, well, you can find that video on Facebook.com/slash CHWA Cottage Hills Wrestling Alliance. Mhm. But you know, you get uh you guys stand there with Buff and the Brave, Dragon's Guild all standing wonderfully tall, raise each other's hands, give each other a bow, and we move straight into our next thing, which didn't even get a chance to do too much because Sean Valiant decides to come out and say address everybody for everything that's happened the past couple weeks. You know? Billy, I know the people listening to this wonderful radio recap can't see my face, but do you, do you see this? Yeah. 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 Uh, to, to, to give the people at home, the, uh, the face, the, the face, just open up your emojis and look at the face that has, two straight lines for eyes and then one straight line for a mouth and you will see Chris Exodus's face. That is the best analogy I think I've ever heard you give Dilcifer Jones. Yeah, Sean Valiant just coming out saying that he thinks it's a bunch of crap that uh which by the way this was something that I caught later that I I I find a very interesting term. Uh Sean Valiant uh decided to call Chaos Jester cashing in on him the Cottage Hills screw job. Sean Valiant of all people should not be saying anything about screw jobs. I mean, did we not see how he actually initially beat Damian Blackwell at ground zero? Oh, I full, fully agree. I fully I'm agree. Not gonna, I'm not going to take the full piss out of Sean Valiant. Let's be honest. 
Sean Valiant was one of the hardest hitting guys on the roster. He's got a very nasty right hand. Mm-hmm. And he's just, you know, he's made it very clear. His intentions are clear. He wants his CHWA championship back. And as, as many jokes as I can make about the way he won the championship, the history books will always show Sean Valiant defeated Damian Blackwell for the CHWA championship. I don't know about you, Mr. Jones, but I, for one, am quite excited for From the Ashes main event. I can't wait. I am too, especially considering your main event for From the Ashes is Chaos Jester versus Sean Valiant versus Damian Blackwell in a triple threat for the heavyweight title. It should be a a crazy heavy-hitting match. And, of course, I want to put all my money on a friend of the show's friend of Radio Recap, the CHWA heavyweight champion, Chaos Jester. I want to put all my money on Chaos. You going to put your money on on Chaos with this one? This is one of those things, Dilly. I don't know who to put my money on. I mean... You have Chaos Jester, who mm. I've been in a tag team with. He's one of my friends. You know, I I think he's one of the best wrestlers that's ever stepped foot in CHWA. He's currently the CHWA champion. He had a great match this night that we're recapping right now. We'll get to that. But, you know, he's, he's phenomenal. But you also have, you know, Sean Valiant, who's really trying to make a name for himself. He's shown why he should be a main eventer. And, of course, you have the third-generation monster. Damien freaking Blackwell. That's hard, man. That's a hard yeah. bet I'm going to make there. Yeah, no, um, it, it's crazy. I, I, I think I would put my money on Chaos 2 only because, not, not because I don't think Chaos can beat either of those gentlemen, but I think Damien is going to be really hard focused on Sean Valiant, considering Sean Valiant is the one who took the title away from Damien. So I'd be I'd be willing to bet that Chaos might be able to get an upper hand on both those gentlemen uh, and capitalize on those two kind of focusing on each other. And speaking of a gentleman that can capitalize on situations, tell the people what's going on next here, Dilly. So uh, the next match of the of the night, or you know, the one that was actually planned by what I have. Um, at least on the on the card, uh, we have Kenneth Collins and Logan Simmons wrestling. Now, Kenneth Collins is has been a man that has been in the main event a few times, uh, but you know, kind of he 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 kind of picks and chooses his best time. Uh, and Logan obviously recently was up for the United States Championship against Harlock Cross. So two real real threats in the ring right now with this match well and let's let's put it break it down like this kenneth collins somebody who dilly i've made it no secret i think kenneth collins is one of the smartest wrestlers on the roster his in-ring iq is through the roof i think he's underrated mm-hmm. i don't like him but i always give the devil his due but man logan simmons is on fire right now i mean logan has got a serious connection with that chwa audience he always has he's always had a good connection with our audience he's david wolf's favorite wrestler by the way is he really yes See, that, david wolf's favorite wrestler i did not know that about about logan that's a... every time logan's getting ready to come through the curtain godfather says here comes david wolf's favorite wrestler and david wolf chuckles so i imagine david wolf must really like logan simmons but yeah, it must be something Nonetheless, Logan's tough, man. I mean, he hurt his knee, as we both know, during that United States Championship match. Harlock, you know, smart move to capitalize on that injury. But Logan was supposed to be out for over a month, you know, Mm -hmm. let his knee rest, but he rehabbed hard enough. And he's already back, man. He's a tough cookie. He's young. He's only going to get better. He's already got a good size to him. Mm-hmm. And where he and where he lacks in experience, I mean, he makes up for it with power and smart wrestling. Just smart, pure mat based wrestling. He it's is. almost as if he had a good trainer or something. It's yeah. almost like he was trained by somebody that has good <laughs> mat based wrestling. Yeah, and Logan Logan's not one of the uh the high flyers uh, of uh CHWA. He's very technical, very Almost, you almost want to say old school, like you said, uh, Matt style wrestling, and I think that benefits him a lot in a lot of matches, especially with someone like Kenneth Collins. Logan is not going to give you the flips and the dips; he's going to give you the kicks and the fists, buddy. Mm-hmm. And the slams. And, 
and we're seeing this in this match. I mean, big clotheslines, big suplexes. I mean, Kenneth just cannot keep Logan contained in this match. I mean, yeah. He tried, and Kenneth Russell, the smart match. I mean, he took every advantage he can, raking the eyes, dropping Logan on that stack of dimes he calls a neck. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything he could do in this match to get ahead, he get, he did. But, yeah. but Dilly, we've seen time and time again, like I have said, you don't count Logan Simmons out. Even when it looks bleak, you never would be, you would be foolish to bet against Logan. And Dilly, tell the people what happened. Yeah, so uh, the the whole way this went is, you know, Kenneth goes and gives uh, Logan a nice suplex, and he goes, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and end this, and he goes for his... Uh, I'm not exactly for sure, but he goes for like a backwards elbow. Logan ducks, misses, and you know Kenneth moves. He calls moves. that. He calls huh? that the Ken He calls that the Kenneth effect. The Kenneth effect. Okay, goes for the Kenneth Kenneth effect. Logan, being smart, ducks. Kenneth falls over right on right on top of Logan, and Rogan Logan pull pulls him over, wraps him up in a pin. One, two, three. One, two, three is right, Dilsifer Jones. But, of course, like I was saying a minute ago, I mean, Kenneth Collins picked the spot, and after the match was over, hit him from behind and immediately targets that bad knee of Logan's that got hurt yep. you know, a couple weeks ago. And uh, now this is just a rumor I'm hearing, Mr. Jones, so you don't quote me on this fully. But I have heard that Logan will be in attendance Sunday, and he is really pissed off. I wouldn't doubt it. I, after coming off of an injury, having someone work, and you know, focus solely on my in, injured injured knee, that's I I'd be pretty pissed off too. Absolutely. But, you know, um, you know who's probably real pissed off? Who's that? It, is our is our next set of wrestlers. We had a tag match between New Foundation, more specifically Sid Manson and Dean Roberts, and the Buff and the Brave. And I bet the Buff and Brave are pretty pissed off at what New Foundation was doing to Dragon's Guild earlier this in the show. Absolutely. And let's talk about Sid Manson and Dean Roberts. Let's talk about the New Foundation. I mean... We've seen Sid and Dean, they, they've definitely tried to make a mark for themselves, not just in CHWA, but more specifically the tag team division. I definitely think they have uh, started to f somewhat find their flow as a tag team. But Dilly, we're talking about tag team flow. How can we not talk about the wonderful Miss Ashlyn Alexander and the beautiful, beautiful Maddie Exodus, the buff and the brave. Yes, to the one of one of the better tag teams of CHWA just came out of came, came kind of out of nowhere with with those two uh, getting together, but just seemed to be a match made in heaven with with the with how they mesh and how they wrestle. And honestly, Sid and Dean had to be worried at the beginning of this match because going up against Ashlyn Alexander and Maddie Exodus, two former women's champions, as well as a current women's champion at the XVW. XVW women's champion. How, and from what how I can you not be nervous? And from what I understand, Mr. Jones, and I, I have to check my sources on this. I'll get back to you on this next week. But I have heard the XVW Women's Championship is actually the Women's World Championship because it's been defended in Mexico, the United States, and Canada twice. All right. I have to do some more due diligence before I rule that in as a fact. But if that is true, then we have a world's women's champion on our roster, and that's pretty cool. That is. For Jones. But I don't think that particular particularly matters, at least to Sid Manson, who is going a little crazy if I if I do say so. A little. Uh, okay, listen, I under I understand. Yeah, you know, a, he, he, yeah, he's fully crazy. Whenever someone smiles and giggles, whenever they're ready to wrestle Dragons Guild, I question their sanity. I, I love, I love you dearly, and I love Elroy dearly, but I'm not stupid. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what, Dilsifer Jones, I appreciate it. You know, but obviously, 
Mr. Manson and Mr. Roberts don't understand that the buff and the brave, more specifically Ashlyn, is the buff for a reason. Because at the start of this match, they wanted to pick a fight. They wanted to mess around with her. And they found out the hard way, very quickly, why they call Ashlyn Alexander the buff of the buff and the brave exactly sid and ashlyn start this match off and as they're circling around the ring checking each other out to make sure who's going to move first dean roberts gets gets in and yanks ashlyn's hair and ashlyn's like oh you want to play get your ass in the ring and immediately big right hands big kicks from ashlyn as we know one of the most just in her time as the women's champion or as the women's champion, I should say. Uh, very, very dominant in that division. Mm-hmm. One of the hardest-hitting women I have ever been in the ring with. And I'm telling you right now, Dilly, I would argue that she's got the hardest-hitting right hand in women's wrestling, period. I mean, this we're not just talking about a woman that you know hits you and, and you recover quickly. If she hits you, you see stars, my man. And, and I'm telling you, besides her having the... Uh the strongest punch. I I argue that she has got one of the nastiest super kicks. I don't want anywhere. I don't want to be anywhere near the other end of her foot when she throws that. Absolutely. And, you know, over the past couple of weeks, Dilly, we have seen the buff and the brave trying to figure out exactly how to stop the new foundation. It seems like they have been a, a thorn in the side of buff and brave, but you know, Dilly, this match, you know, it seems like Maddie and Ashlyn are really starting to find a flow together uh, that is, is uh, impeccable. And we saw a lot of tag team moves in this match. Of course, Maddie and Ashlyn both rocking olive green colored gear. Brand new gear for the Buff and the Brave. I'm a yeah. gearhead. Everybody knows that I love gear on wrestlers. We saw Maddie bust out some new moves this week, too. Big butterfly suplex. We saw Ashlyn bust out an enziguri. Some moves that we don't typically see from these ladies as the intensity in this match heats up, Dilly. And, yeah, and I was going to say, it's like, I don't think I've ever seen Maddie hit a butterfly suplex. No, sir, I have not either. But, you know, Sid and Dean also, you know, no strangers to uh, to competition. They're not strangers to being a tag team. We saw a lot of good tag team work out of them this week. Every time Ashlyn or Maddie would start to get the advantage or maybe knock one of the other ones off the apron, that number game would come into effect. And mm-hmm. you know, that's something, even though Sid and Dean haven't been around a very long time, that's something that they do know how to take advantage of is that number system. They we really do. Sid Manson bust out a headlock driver or front face lock driver, whatever you want to call it. And uh, very devastating. I couldn't believe Ashlyn kicked out when I saw that live. Yeah, that's a, that's a move that on, honestly only crazy people would go for because to hold your opponent down, you have to slam your own face under the mat. And it takes someone truly crazy to go, hey, guess what? I'm going to hit my own face to make sure you're not going anywhere. Definitely, definitely not uh, what I would consider mentally stable is Sid Manson. But one person I can say is mentally stable somewhat is this Dean Roberts character. I mean, Dean Roberts, as much like I said, Dilly, every time I see this new foundation, I want to make jokes. I want to I just want to laugh and I, I want to be whimsical. But, you know, it. it The fact of the matter is these guys, every week when they come out here, they're getting that chemistry down. They're improving as wrestlers, and Mm -hmm. uh, they're a force to be reckoned with, man. They're a force to be reckoned with. They can take quite the ass whooping. They really can. uh, You know, they're busting out new moves, too. Uh, They've been busting out drop toe holds and knees to the back of the head. A variant of it this week was a knee to the hand, trying to damage that right hand of Ashlyn Alexander. Mm -hmm. But a lot of of neck work this week, it seems, but— yeah, either so way, I mean that that's one thing I, I am curious. One of the one of the few moves that I seen Dean bust out, I know on Ashlyn, was that uh that sling blade. Or that this Oh yeah. That's who that is. That that is a nasty looking move and I know it's been hit on you. I I, I can't imagine what that feels like. It is Imagine getting into a car wreck at like 40 miles, 50 miles an hour, and your neck just whiplashing back and forth a few times, that's what you've got Oof. with that sling blade. But nonetheless, Ashlyn Alexander eventually did make the tag to mm-hmm. Maddie Exodus, who was able to hit, slightly hit, I guess I should say, the skull-crushing finale, which in theory would have been it, but I don't think she got all of it. Dean Roberts also managed to break up the pin, and Dilly, 
tell the people what happened at the end of this match because this was this was despicable. This was criminal. So at the at the end of this match, uh, God, it lo- the new foundation just did what they absolutely could. Maddie Exus, unfortunately, in the ring, didn't get a chance to get to her her tag partner Ashlyn. Uh, Angelo Grimsley it takes takes Ashton Alexander out of the equation. Sid Manson picks up Matty Exodus, and Dean Roberts comes in and basically just throws Matty's face into the ground. I have I have course, zero too. wrestling idea what this move is called. Well, I just know it, it looks a, it it looks hor- horrifying. It is a combination of a glam slam and a bulldog, and of course at the end there. You know, you see Sid Manson, handful of tights. I don't know if Maddie would have kicked out after that. I've seen her kick out of some big moves, so she might have. But that handful of tights, I mean, that's that's almost a guaranteed win, especially if a wrestler's got their bell rung. New Foundation, of course, you know, I, I want to say they cheated for the victory in that. The numbers game definitely took place. Ashlyn might have been able yeah. to break up the pin had it not been for Angelo Grimsley. But that's not going to show that in the record books. It's just going to show the winners of the match. Sid Manson, Dean Roberts, my hat's off to him a little bit, but we'll see where they're at in six months. Yeah, and hopefully those women are okay. Hopefully your your wife is 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 feeling feeling better after that. And, and she fine. bench pressed more than me today at the gym. I I assure you she's fine. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's let's talk about some more strong women here. Uh, let's talk Radical about Rick's not a woman. Uh, but uh, I mean. He, he he's involved with women, women, women beating. That's true. He and, is. He is, in fact, the local woman beating guy. Yeah, it's it, it's. But, you know, I'll get I'll Dilsifer give for Jones. Dilsa for Jones. Have you ever watched cops from back in the 90s? Uh, yes, I have. Give Rick a wife beater and jean shorts. That man is going to jail for beating his wife, you know? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> but, you know, let's 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 give him some some credit in this. All right, sorry about that everybody. Mike's got a little messed up and stopped recording. My mic's recording. a piece of junk, Dilly. Just tell him the truth. It, it, it is Exodus's mic is is not the greatest, but um as we were as we were saying, Radical Rick deciding, you know, everybody's been calling him a woman beater, and he said, you know what, if it if you're gonna bl- call me out for woman beating, I'm at least gonna get something out of it, and challenges Sophia Sombra for the international title. Let's talk about this, Dilly. I mean, I don't, I I do not like Radical Rick. I think he's a deplorable human being, but I'm gonna be very blunt. The man's got a point. If he's going to be accused of beating up the women, he might as well get something out of it. And this international title, man, I said it last week here on Radio Recap, that that championship is a very gorgeous championship, and it is it is worth quite the pretty penny. Any wrestler would be honored to hold it, but right now, currently holding it as of, you know, what's going on, what you're hearing in this match. Sophia Somber, the champion, getting ready to square off with Radical Rick, the challenger. And mm-hmm. Dilly, we can make a lot of jokes, but I mean, Radical Rick has just gotten out of a, uh, what do you want to call it, a, a, a program with Chaos Jester, CHWA uh, champion. Yeah, we'll we'll call it, we'll call it a program because what everyone else calls a program, I call sheer stupidity on Rick's part. Because I agree with that. Be, because you you picked a fight with. You know, somebody who you you made real mad, and then that person took that anger out and uh, put it put it towards uh, the the heavyweight, and he's now the heavyweight champion. So, uh, Radical Rick, not the br- most brilliant move on Radical Rick's part. No, not at all. But you know what was a brilliant move is kind of. Uh, Egg and Sophia Sombra into doing a cheering battle at the beginning of this match, and as Sophia's coming up on on the ropes, Radical Rip comes up behind her, gives her a good forearm, and then slams her straight down onto her back with a power bomb, Dilly. Power bombed her from the middle rope to the ground. Sophia, though tough as they come, gets up, collects herself, 
This mm-hmm. match gets underway for the CHWA International Championship. And let's talk about the International Championship for a second, Dilly. Mm-hmm. The, the, the all division, as we have dubbed it back behind the curtain, pulling back the curtain here, folks. Management's going to be mad at me again. But the all division where the men and the women can wrestle each other for this championship, a revolutionary concept, something mm-hmm. that is done internationally, but not so much in the United States. And Miss Sofia Sombra, the spicy Puerto Rican, the lady in red herself has said look i'm an international wrestler i want the international championship to be able to be wrestled for by everybody pretty cool concept dill pretty cool concept i agree and i'm glad that uh last week she won her match uh i believe it was last week um won her match against uh vicious victoria with i believe the help of dragon's guild uh and it became official she is the international champion and we now have a new title for any wrestler to take on, man or woman. Uh, and I hon- honestly, I couldn't be happier. Sophia is a great wrestler, and I, 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 uh, I really enjoy the fact that this this title is now uh, now up for grabs. And uh, it sounds like Rick was pretty happy about it too. And, you know, let's talk about Radical Rick for a second. We make a bunch of jokes about how he's an idiot and how he shouldn't have been messing with chaos. And But let's be honest here. Radical Rick is someone he knows how to play a lot of mind games. He knows how to get in the head of his opponent. And mm-hmm. I think part of the reason this match started the way it is is because he knew Sophia would play in to the let you know the cheer battle game if you will and yes you know we see throughout this entire match every time sophia starts to get somewhat of an advantage radical rick finds a way to cut her off finds a way to shut down the momentum finds a way to kill all of that momentum going forward and you know that's smart wrestling but what wasn't smart mr dilsifer jones is pissing off a puerto rican especially a puerto rican that is the international champion in chwa yeah and uh he got hit with the latina heat if you will oh very much so and you know that was something that rick probably shouldn't done is halfway through this match i guess rick listening to the crowd hears some some booing and some hollering and then some heckling and go and turns around and tells everybody to shut up and Sophia takes full advantage of that and just like earlier gives elbow gives Rick a nice elbow to the back then decides to run run to the corner to give him a couple double knees proceeds to chop the living hell out of him you know that's something that you don't see from a lot of our women at least not too often is them j- just like you know what you want to you want to go i'm gonna give you a couple nice ones in the corner well and you know the thing is with sophia somber dilly like i've said a few times already i believe tonight and like i said last week during radio recap sophia sombra she is as tough as they come man she's gonna mm-hmm. hit you hard she's gonna hit you if you give her an opening and i'll tell you what's scary dilly i'll tell you what's scary is sophia just doesn't stop coming at you. She doesn't stop. She will no. come at you fighting the entire time. And we've seen that in this match. You know, Radical Rick, every time he would start to try to get the advantage, Sophia would find a way to come back. But Radical Rick, man, like I said, smart wrestling. Very smart wrestling. But, you know, Sophia just wouldn't stay down. Went as far as to hit the AA on Sophia, and Sophia managed to kick out. Rick looked as shocked as they come. At this, because Rick has put a lot of people away with that AA, man. Mm-hmm. Put a lot of people away with that AA. But Sophia, ever, just ever so valiant, yeah. ever so feisty, yeah, Rick, and ever so, so, ever so Sophia. Yes. And Rick, after hitting that AA, rolls out because he can't believe that Sophia kicked out of it. And Sophia goes, nah, we ain't done yet. Runs out, grabs a hold of him, throws him against a ring post, then throws him back in the ring. It's like, all right, come on, let's keep going. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what, Dilly, I'll tell you what. I have I have seen a lot of intergender wrestling in my time. I've seen mm-hmm. a lot of intergender wrestling. But one thing I have not seen a lot of is sunset flip power bombs from the female wrestler to the male. And Sophia hits a beautiful sunset flip power bomb to the center of the ring from the top rope radical rick it looked like he did come down a little bit on sophia sombra but you know what that's why they call it high risk dilly high mm-hmm. risk 
high reward. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose, but Sophia took a risk. Definitely looked like she got the better end of it, but this match, this was a good match, Dilly. I'm not going to make jokes about Rick. This was a good match, and Rick as a wrestling a fan, hard I enjoyed it. Match against Sophia, but you know, at the at the end of this, Sophia just uh just was too was too much for Rick. Uh, got him got him in the corner after after some more scruffling, threw him down. And uh, what it, what is what it, what is her finisher? It's uh, that is a that is a snapmare roll through Pele kick. Yeah, uh, I don't she, know exactly what she calls it. I I I think it's Latin fire, if I'm not mistaken. I could believe that either that or Latina fire, one of the two. Yeah, but but either way, that's that's what she hits. She hits her finish, and she, Rick one two three. Sophia Samba retains the international championship. And man, I, again, Dilly, I mean, I just want to real quick, just on the record, man, very proud of Sophia Sombra. Very, very proud. She is absolutely, since she come back, has just shown why she is an asset. You know, she has shown mm-hmm. what women's wrestling can be, and I'm very proud of her. Somebody I'm not proud of, though, after this match is over, here comes Victoria, surprise attack. She gets, uh, it seemed like Sophia seen her coming right near the end, but, you know, after a hard fought, what, 10, 10, 11 minute match, I think? Um, yeah, yeah, roughly 12. So after a 12 minute, not just a normal match, a championship match, which is mentally and physically exhausting, didn't have the fight left in her, Vicious Victoria hits a very vicious elbow to the jaw, dropping Sophia, raising the title above her head to signify that I'm coming for this championship. And Victoria just leaves her laying there in a pile of uh, of heap, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that you know we're gonna look forward to. It from the ashes is uh, Vic- uh, vicious Victoria is uh, ch- cashing in her rematch clause against Sophia for what used to be the women's division championship, and Sophia accepted. So you will see Sophia Sombra take on Vicious Victoria. For the international championship at From the Ashes. And I, I for one, Dilly, I can't wait for that match. You know, I think it's going to be a good match, and I uh, very much look forward to what's going to happen there. But speaking of things that um, that I'm looking forward to, and speaking of things that uh, make you go are interesting in the night. Yeah, let's talk about what happened next. Here comes the Mizoku. Yes, Mizoku uh, came out and. I think he wanted to uh, address the nation, or maybe he wanted to call out the parasite, but he didn't really get a chance to, because as soon as that mic went up to his his mouth, Skittles came out. Also, Skittles was wearing the parasite mask. Yes, he was wearing the parasite mask, which is very interesting, because we've only seen two people wear the parasite mask. And when you wear the parasite mask, something happens. And let's be honest here, Dilly. I mean, Skittles with a noble cause coming out to basically tell Mizoku what you did to Tyler Blake wasn't nice. And I'm here to fight for my friend Tyler Blake's honor. I cannot believe I am saying out loud that Skittles and Tyler Blake are friends. That is what Skittles says. And Skittles has the mask. Yeah, Skittles Skittles came out and and said Mizoku. Mizoku, you a bully, and I don't like bullies. And so Skittles challenged Mizoku. What? Yeah, Skittles just can't can't be thinking right right now. Not necessarily the move I would have made. No. But <laughs> I will admit that took some Skittles to do that. It did <laughs> some gumdrops, some some gumballs. There we go. Some gumballs. Yes, sir. Some big gumballs indeed. But nonetheless, Dilly, I'm not gonna not gonna drag this out. I'm gonna tell the people exactly what basically happened. Mizoku making pretty short work of Skittles. Just in my opinion, this was just an absolute beatdown. This was brutal. Yeah. All of us. All of us in the back. Let, let's pull back the curtain. We love Skittles. Mm-hmm. We love Skittles. We love being around him. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever seen and ever met in my life. And Mizoku just brutalized him. 
And, you know, Mizoku's been doing a thing that not a lot of wrestlers have been doing recently. When he throws punches, he doesn't actually aim to punch the guy. He uses all that velocity to put his shoulder into your face and break your nose. Yeah. Pretty impressive. It's it there. It's nasty watching it because you look and go, well, you know, what are you doing? But you're not realizing that he's connecting with his shoulder to the to the face. And once you realize that that's what's happening, you the Skittles has to adjust his 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 mask quite a few times. And I can imagine why, because that shoulder to the face, I can imagine his nose is probably rearranged and making making that mask hard to stay in one spot. And let's talk about the Mizoku, man. I mean, a big moonsault to the outside of the ring. He lands on his feet, Dilly. He lands on his feet. Yes. Mizoku is known for doing any flip that he can and somehow landing on his feet. I, 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 I chalk that up to the supernatural because there's no way a, a human should be able to do any type of move that I watch him do and stick the landing. Oh, and Dilly, just the way Mizoku moves around, the way he gets in and out of the ring, the way he walks, you can tell that, you know, something's going on here. And yeah. he goes for a cover and then kicks Skittles out himself. And I believe he does this. No, no, no yeah, he does. He does this twice. Yeah. And then he just begins to, again, just brutalize Skittles. He bites him, throws him around. But Dilly... Let's uh, let's talk about how this match ended. Let's talk about how this match ended in one of the most impressive things that, in my opinion, I have ever seen at CHWA. Mizoku puts Skittles in the center of the ring, and then just from the top rope, hits one of the most gorgeous shooting star presses I've ever seen in my life. One, two, three. That's the match. That's it. Mizoku with a shooting star press. And this was, he made quick work of Skittles, man. This was a short match. He really did. And the uh, that wasn't the end, right? After Mizoku gets the one, two, three on Skittles, Mizoku grabs a hold of the parasite mask and puts it on. And then right as he puts it on, you hear from behind that the parasite has come out pulls down his his face mask that he wears revealing revealing something that I, we've not seen with parasite yet then he looks at Mizoku and does something points at him the next thing he know next thing you know Mizoku is flaying flailing around on the ground as if the parasite has control over his parasite mask. And and Dilly, this is just as somebody who has been around CHWA a long time, I, I can confidently say this is one of the darkest darkest sagas in the history book of CHWA, and I'm excited to see where it goes. And speaking of things that I'm excited about, Mr. Jones, April twenty fourth. CHWA presents From the Ashes live at 127 West MacArthur Drive. Yes. Streaming, well, not streaming, but it will be a, a uploaded exclusively to our Patreon. Do we tell it, these people about the Patreon? Yeah, uh, the Patreon. Well, our Patreon is where everybody can go check out exclusive content. Uh, Mostly our pay-per-views go there as of right now. We're kind of working on some behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, some extra content for you guys. But right now, the pay-per-views is where you want to go see uh, at Patreon, patreon.com slash chwa. And you want to subscribe to the For Life tier. For Life tier is $10 a month, and that's going to get you your pay-per-views and any other exclusive content that comes out. That's the big tier. That's the good tier. But... You know, that's that's where you want to see all the pay-per-views. And uh, part of our pay-per-views, you get big matches. And big matches, like now at this particular uh, episode of TNTD Thursday Night Throwdown, we had a big match. We had Drew Carter versus the former heavyweight champion, Damian Blackwell. And what a match it was. 
though those are two heavy hitters that honestly i was looking forward to in may because i thought damien was going to retain the belt and i was going to love seeing carter face damien at mayday but unfortunately things didn't work out and now Damien is taking on chaos here right now in this particular episode. And I am thankful for the powers that be. The people behind the scenes that run this show. The people in suits that allow me and you to do this radio recap every week and allow CHWA to be what it is. For giving us Drew Carter versus Damien Blackwell. Because ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and say it right here right now. Damien Blackwell, Drew Carter, two of the... Best pure professional wrestlers, not just in CHWA, not just in the Midwest, but the country. Mm-hmm. And we get to see these two lock horns in the center of the CHWA ring at 127 West MacArthur Drive. Kind of chills, Illinois, 620 Mm-hmm. And, you know, something that we got to make mention of is as this match is getting ready to get underway, uh, had an announcement that uh, there was going to be a special commentator uh, in this match. Mr. Sean Valiant, the anti-social yes. one. Yes, we're not allowed to enjoy anything in CHWA. I've learned that when something fun happens, there's always some Scrooge that must ruin it. Yeah. And Sean Valiant, make no doubt about it. You are, in fact, a Scrooge. Yeah, you that, stooge. That must have been a GM Vicky decision. But regardless, you know, uh, Damien and Carter in here wrestling. Sean scouting out the talent. Because at the end of the month, like we said earlier, he's facing at least one of these men, Damien Blackwell, in a triple threat with Chaos Jester. And honestly, prob- probably a smart move on his half to to scope out Damien Blackwell. Make sure he knows everything there is about Damien. Well, and you got to understand, Dilly, I know that you haven't, uh, you stepped in the ring once to uh, be in the King of the Hills match, but Uh, yeah, something you must understand, Dilly, as a competitor, guys change after a big loss, man. They change. They they really do. And Damien Blackwell losing that championship, that's a big loss. And I think Sean Valiant, smart move to see what kind of uh, Damian Blackwell to expect at from the ashes. I agree. Uh, Damian been a little bit more, a little bit more ballsy with everything he's been doing. Damian, Damian's no, no small fry. You know, he's, I believe, was it six, six two, six three, six three and a half. Yeah, he's he's a tall boy, but also not only tall, three hundred, three hundred twenty pounds. This is oh, no... he must have lost. He must have lost weight because a couple weeks ago at the weigh-in for the heavyweight title match, he was 346 pounds. Ah, uh, see, I, I don't, I don't, I don't ever remember anything. We, we all know Dilly's memory is, is trash. But you know, regardless, the point is, not a small man coming off these ropes, and we've been watching it recently. Damian taking full advantage of that particular thing, jumping off those ropes. In fact. Switching things up and making his finisher of a, a giant a frog splash. I don't know. All I know is front flip. Uh, does, is it, is it a, all I know is big man shouldn't be flying off of the top rope. And Damien, oh. Damien's been jumping off that top rope to take care of his take care of his enemies and just. I, I think Damien decided to put that tuck that away for this particular match because Drew is no slouch and, and knows not to fall for the high flying stuff. Listen, Drew Carter, I don't like Drew Carter. He's part of the new foundation. We all know how I feel about them. Mm-hmm. But Drew Carter has been around this game a long, long, long time, man. And I taught Drew Carter everything that Drew Carter knows. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you right now, Dilly. Not only is Drew Carter one of the better mat wrestlers on the roster, but that bull hammer elbow, man, that big right elbow that he possesses that he keeps in his back pocket at all times. Mm-hmm. I have not seen too many people kick out from that in like the five or six years that Drew Carter has been a wrestler. Yeah. And yeah. Drew Carter's been to the top of the mountain. He's a former CHWA champion. He didn't hold it very long because 
I believe it was a week or two after he won the championship, he had to go away and have surgery, unfortunately. But, you know, it's uh, still, Drew Carter's a, Drew Carter's a threat, man. It's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. I want to... I can't wait to see who wins it from the ashes so we know exactly who Drew Carter's wrestling at CHWA May Day. I'm yes, excited. I'm excited as well. And, you know, something that we were kind of alluding to earlier, you know, Chris, you, you taught him everything you know, and uh, I think something that comes with that is ring awareness. You know, Drew Carter always fairly aware of what's going on in the ring. You know, at one point in this match, Damian goes to 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 slam Carter and uh, as he's coming down, Carter knows that he's next to the rope, so he throws his foot on that rope. The ref starts counting, and Dean Roberts goes, hey, 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 hey. His foot is on the rope and stops the count. You know, that's some real good ring awareness out of Drew Carter. It's, it's, it's moments like that, Dilly, that not only is Drew Carter's ring awareness through the roof, but the new foundation show why they are a formidable team, why they're a formidable faction. Because mm-hmm. maybe the ref doesn't see his foot on the rope and counts to three and rings the bell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. He doesn't see that. You know, Damian wins even though it's a clear non-pin. You know, and the record books would show Damian Blackwell victorious. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, these two. I mean, these two just had a superb clinic, a wrestling match, an actual wrestling match these two just two proud young men out there hitting each other as hard as they can having a match that every wrestler should take notes on this is a great match this is an excellent match yeah if i'm not mistaken roughly 15 16 minutes worth of pure wrestling that just unmatched and unseen in in this area and we're talking about like you just said 15 16 minutes we're talking about a guy who's 250 plus and a guy who's almost 350 pounds. In-ring cardio. It's a very important thing. It's unlike anything else. Do your cardio, ladies and gentlemen. Do your cardio. Really? That's coming from a man with one lung. Do your cardio. Yeah, dude. It, it, you need it, especially whenever you start wrestling with, with guys this size. And, you know, I, I might have spoke too soon. Drew Carter, not a high, not a high flyer, but see him come out uh, during this match. And uh, I, what I assumed to try and do a crossbody, but just can't get it over. So just it's like, you know what? I'm going to just tackle you midair. Good luck catching 250 plus pounds. Sometimes, you know, exhaustion does set in. And the only thing you can do is recklessly throw yourself at your opponent. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And I that's think coming it, from somebody who's thrown themselves at everybody I've ever wrestled. And I think, you know, it worked for him this match because that's something I've been, I've, I've noticed this whole match is at some point, Damien's leg, his knee or something seems to be injured. So you can kind of see him stumbling around, kind of limping. And, you know, it's already hard enough trying to catch somebody whenever you're fresh, but whenever you're hurting and one of your legs just doesn't want to hold catching somebody that that big, that leg is going to give out. That knee is going to give out. And that's real smart of Drew Carter to think of. Yeah, you know, you're talking about smart, of course. Angelo Grimsley up on the apron. Drew Carter applies a calf crusher. Damien finally able to make it to the ropes when the ref finally is watching what's going on. Steen Roberts wouldn't let him get to the ropes. And, you know, I, I will admit, Damien Blackwell's knee has not been the same since, what was it, back in February? I believe he picked up. I think it was Sean Valiant for that Blackwell driver, and his mm-hmm. knee just caved in, buckled in. I can't, I can't believe he didn't have to go have surgery. His knee looked gross. Yeah, Damien, Damien's knee has always been a problem for him. You know, it wasn't nearly as bad until uh, I think that match, but it, it's still just a weak spot for him that that people tend to take advantage of, and you know, rightfully so. You got to take any chance that you can with him. I mean, 350 pounds, man. That's a lot of weight for the that on that frame for those knees to carry. I I don't blame people for aiming for that. It's a mm-hmm. good stratagem. It really Dilly, is. This match, I mean, like we said, it went the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've not checked this match out already, please do yourself a favor. If you're a fan of pro wrestling, you're a fan of good pro wrestling, go watch this match. But Dilly, tell the people what happened at the end of this match. Yeah, un- unfortunately, during this match, Drew Carter trying his best to knock down Damien. Damien. 
comes over to the ropes to kind of catch himself. At that point, Sean Valiant decides to get up from commentary and come grab hold of Damien, hold him still, and kind of distract him. Well, Damien kicks him off and turns around. Drew Carter, bull hammer elbow right to the face. Right to the jaw, and you can just tell, man. Dilly, I don't know if you've ever been knocked unconscious before, but Damian Blackwell is clearly, clearly unconscious. I mean, his body is naturally moving, uh, and in the world of uh, combat sports, we call that the uh, the lights are on, but absolutely nobody's home. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, Damian Blackwell, the lights were on, no one was home. Yeah, nobody's home, and... Just as just as you think everything is done and over, Carter going up to celebrate, Sean Valiant come back out to finish the job and beat the living tar out of Damien. But nonetheless, here comes the cavalry, here comes Chaos Jester. These two start getting into it. Chaos does start to get the better half of Sean Valiant here, even getting him up on his shoulders, going for the Chaos Theory, but Sean Valiant manages to slip out of it. Hits him in the in the lower section, goes for the Claymore. This was just a brawl, Dilly. This was mm-hmm. just a fight. This was just a fight. Sean Valiant, of course, bailing out to run. Chaos looking almost like he's going to follow him. I'm noticing a trend here. People really want to poke the bear. And then here, when, and when the bear finally stands up and roars, people run from Chaos, man. Oh, yeah. Chaos is not the biggest guy on the roster. But I think people know Chaos is very, very dangerous. Oh, yes, but especially once you start really poking and prodding him. And, you know, that's something that I think Sean has just done too much. You know, case in point, Rick did it too much. Now Sean's getting to the point where he's starting to be a real thorn in the side for chaos. And I think chaos, I think chaos is going to take it out on him from the ashes. And, you know, an interesting development here, Dilly. Now you see at the end of there, of course, once again, chaos and Damien having each other's back, and, you know, that's something that I do like is that Damien and Chaos, while they are rivals, while they are fighting for the most prestigious championship in independent professional wrestling today, the CHWA Gotta Chills Wrestling Alliance Championship, Mm -hmm. a lot of sportsmanship, uh, and a little bit of a bond between those two, and I dig it, but speaking of somebody that is not loyal, speaking of somebody that doesn't know what loyalty means and definitely doesn't have a bond with anybody except Cousin Wayland. Yeah, but Out still the a champion for the next at match. the same time. Yeah, I, want to, I don't want to oh. talk about it. One half <laughs> of the tag team champions. Here comes Bo Dickerson. The One half of the Bayou boys. Yeah, he uh, come come out and uh, ha- has, a, has a singles match against someone... I, and I, I don't I don't think I realized this until literally just now. Someone from his neck of the woods. The oh, Bayou, yeah. The Bayou boys are from the, the I believe the the is it I, I think it's from the swamps of Louisiana. But at the say I but I know Voodoo is also I, I think he's from the Bayou of Louisiana. If I if I remember my. Listen, my, from uh, what I. From what I have heard in the rumor mill, ladies and gents, you heard me, you know, you heard me mention the rumor mill last week. It runs rampant. From what I understand, this particular fight right here has been going on for quite some time. Bo Dickerson and Voodoo King have been fighting since they were little kids. Apparently, they grew up in the same bayou, as Dilly was saying. But nonetheless, we do have the Voodoo King, who is interlocked in quite the feud with Harlock Cross. And we have Bo Dickerson, one half of the CHWA Tag Team Champions, getting ready to do battle. And uh, the referee was running a bit behind, needed a bottle of water. I conveniently managed to make sure he was there. Yeah, Jeremy, the always, ref, we love you, buddy. Always doing your job to make sure that uh, he gets out right whenever he needs to. Uh, but, you know, this match comes to start. And like you said, those two have been fighting since childhood and just like right now, these two decide to fight in the middle of the ring. And Voodoo, big right hands, big left hands, puts him in the corner. Voodoo is, man, Voodoo weighs, if I remember correctly, Voodoo is right around 300 pounds. He is a huge human being. And I don't think sometimes, Dilly, that the camera 
does justice to just how big some of these these men are because they really you, don't you've been around voodoo you've been up close and personal with them in the locker room when we're all crammed back there like sardines and voodoo when he walks past you man he take he is the size of a small car he is a big guy yeah i believe he's the third biggest guy on our roster yeah I, and I was I was close. I I went back and looked in my records. Voodoo King is from the swamps of Louisiana. The swamps and the bayou. No wonder they're having such a big, such a big rivalry. I have heard in Louisiana that is quite the uh, quite the rivalry between the swamp dwellers and the bayou boys. Yeah, that's a that's a feud you don't really want to get into. Uh, you don't want to be caught on each other's turf and. I think both these men decided to try and say, you know, this ring is my turf, but. And what in this match, Dilly? I mean, these guys, these guys, they were swinging for the fences. Bo cranked up with a huge right hook. Voodoo ducked and delivers. And, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. The gnarliest reverse atomic drop I have ever seen in the 25 years that I have been on God's green earth. It was so gnarly. Yeah, he had, he had, he had Bo good six, seven feet in the air before he decided to take him down right on top of his knee. But Bo ever the fighter, you know, fights back and he really gets back in this match, Dilly. And these guys, I mean, they are, they are just, they are hitting each other hard. They're swinging for the fences. I'm going to be very blunt. I have uh, seen a lot of fights in the past couple of months at CHWA, but this was a fight. It really was. You know, Bo pulling out some of his usual nasty tricks, like someone who happens to be, you know, leaning, trying to catch their breath and jumps right on the back of their neck and pins them against the second rope. You know, pulling pulling out some classic Bo Dickerson bought you boys shenanigans to try and take full advantage of the Voodoo King, which you kind of have to whenever you have to whenever you're facing someone who dabbles in the dark arts. Well, see, and the thing that gets me, Dilly, you know, Bo Dickerson is not necessarily a small guy. You know, Bo Dickerson's got some good height. I think Bo Dickerson goes five ten. I, I believe think. so. Five nine, five ten. Bo Dickerson's 165 pounds. Now, he's not necessarily a small guy, but standing next to Voodoo, he looks small. And I, I don't ever encourage cheating. Every shoe I use is made in America, but I don't encourage cheating, ladies and gentlemen. But I, I, I can say that when you're wrestling a guy the size of the Voodoo King. I understand why Bo might use, you know, the five count on the ropes to his advantage. He might use the 10 second count out of the ring to his advantage. I can understand because Voodoo's a big, scary dude, man. Mm hmm. A case in case in point, I'd 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 be terrified if I'm laying there trying to gasp for air and a big 300 pound plus man decide to come off the ropes. And jump fully on my chest. Uh, that's just something that I don't ever want to deal with, ever. I assure you, you don't want any kind of chest problems, Dilly. No. But, you know, it's be, uh, let, 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 let's let's talk about how, how this match goes. You know, Bo fighting every inch and tooth to what he can to beat the Voodoo King. and. Voodoo gets the better half of him and gets ready to set up for his his slam. Gives it to him Hit. and huh? He hits the Voodoo doll clean. Hit the Voodoo the very, doll clean. Very good Voodoo doll. But then Dilly, tell the people what happens next. Unfortunately, you know, Voodoo hits his Voodoo doll and right as he's about to continue on for the pin, some music plays. From Harlock Cross, as Voodoo looks on, you know, waiting for for Harlock Cross to to come through that curtain. Bo Dickerson gets up and decides, I've got my chance. Grabs Voodoo off the off the turnbuckles, rolls him up one, two, three, and Bo Dickerson rolls out of the ring and celebrates, going, "Yeah, 
I did it on my own. I didn't need Cousin Waylon. I did it on my own. And listen, Dilly, I understand that mentality. I totally get it. But, man, I don't think this is the last time we will see Voodoo King go one-on-one -on -one with Bo Dickerson, but there's bigger fish to fry here, Dilly. I mean, there is. Harlock Cross is really barking up a big tree, and uh, should we tell the people? Should we tell the people what happened? What happened after the show on Sunday? Yeah, I think we tell them what happened after the show Sunday. Well, if you didn't follow us on Facebook, you would. You missed the uh, the uh, breaking news that came out um, Wednesday um, after the show. Voodoo and a, a few other roster are kind of relaxing, getting their whereabouts, and then all of a sudden, burst through the door. Harlock Crow Cross comes in, decides he didn't want to come through the curtain. He's going to come after the show and put a beat down on the Voodoo King. And, after and a beat down it was. These guys, man, these guys tore up the locker room area. A mirror got broken. I was there. I tried to help separate it. But my God, Dilly, they, that locker room was a mess. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they, uh, they tore it up. And, you know, after. After that, who who knows what's going to happen? You know, I think voodoo is in Harlock's head, you know, doing a little voodoo magic. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens at From the Ashes when those two square off. And, you know, speaking of, of squaring off, out through the curtain next comes Aleister Crowe. Now, somebody who has had a very, 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 had a really good 2021 End of mm -hmm. the year in the main event. Start of 2022 wasn't horrible for him, but you know he's he's been on a mission, Mr. Jones. He's been on a mission that everyone is a victim, and he came out on Sunday and made it very clear. Look, everyone's a victim, including legends. Mm -hmm. And who else to answer the call than the Native Nightmare? The, in my opinion, best overall wrestler that I have ever gotten to step in the ring with so far. And the man who is a father figure to most everyone, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't put together who we're talking about, talking about the man himself, the native nightmare, Jeremy freaking Lightfoot. And today, Dilsifer Jones, at the time of this recording, by the time this is out, Everyone will have heard it and seen it officially on the WWE website, the World Wrestling Entertainment website. Jeremy Lightfoot credited as one of the men who helped train the Viper, Randy Orton. Yes. Lightfoot is no one to mess with. Lightfoot, his credentials speak for themselves. He is a future Hall of Famer. He's a Midwest legend. And this match, Dilly, this match was incredible. It really was, you know, Aleister Crow making sure he know, you know, that everybody knows everybody's a victim, but calling out, uh, and I, if I believe I remember correctly, Aleister Crow did not call Jeremy uh, Lightfoot a legend. He called him a so-called legend, a wannabe legend. He didn't didn't give Jeremy the respect he deserved, and so he called him out uh, to to get to basically do an open challenge. Jeremy answers the call. Boy, what a dumb mistake Aleister Crow made, because that is not somebody you want to answer that call. You could have literally called out anybody else on the roster if you're Aleister Crow, and I would say that was a good move. Calling out Jeremy Lightfoot is so criminally stupid that I think Aleister Crow should have to get an IQ test done before he could reproduce. Mm -hmm. And you know the match started off off pretty good. Aleister getting in some uh, getting in some good offense, given given some. Some things that I know you personally love, some some elbow, uh, elbow drags, you know, body slam. And as Crow is celebrating, he doesn't realize Lightfoot's already stood up and runs right, <laughs> right into some Right bun. behind him, some hip tosses, some deep arm drags. Lightfoot on absolute fire, hits a giant 
giant body slam. Crow goes like 270 pounds. Giant body slam on Aleister Crow by Jeremy Lightfoot. The crowd in attendance of CHWA Nation fired up at 127 West MacArthur Drive, as always, every single Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely mm-hmm. fired up. The Native Nightmare taking his time. This is something that I have tried to explain several times. You know, you notice Aleister Crow rolls out to get a breather. Lightfoot doesn't go right out after him. He doesn't dive out onto him. Yeah. He takes his time to preserve his energy, you know? Now, younger Lightfoot, 25-year-old Lightfoot, probably would have dove out onto him, maybe done a moonsault. This Lightfoot, the battle-tested veteran Lightfoot, he knows how to keep a pace, Dilly. Oh, yeah. Lightfoot knows what he's doing and knows that it's like, listen, I, I threw you down in a body slam, and you decided to roll out of the ring, try and catch your breath, catch your back. I'm cool as a cucumber. I'm breathing nice and easy. Just let you come back in so you can come get your ass whooped. And, you know, to Crow's credit, he gets back in there. He gets right back into the fight. And he, you know, he brought it to Lightfoot, man. He brought mm-hmm. the fight right to Lightfoot. And that is something, you know, Crow Crow with a moniker like everyone's a victim. You got to know how to fight. And I will give Crow credit for the fact that he absolutely knows how to fight. He's one of the hardest hitting guys on the CHWA roster, every kick, every forearm, every elbow, every punch, every stomp, everything he does is with a purpose. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of wasted motions inside that squared circle with Aleister Crow. You got to be on your game if you're going to get ahead of him. And we saw it in the match, you know. Jeremy Lightfoot is known for two things: his chops to the chest and his chop, his overhand chop to the top of your dome piece, the top mm-hmm. of your skull. And what's Crow start doing? Instantly starts working on that left hand. The Weapon of choice for Jeremy Lightfoot. Yeah, the weapon that he uses to do the chops and that over overhead knife edge. You know, is like that. That's a smart move by Aleister Crow, taking out something that he knows is going to come come get him. You know, I, I I'll give him credit. That is that is a smart move. I don't want I don't want any part of of that hand from Jeremy Lightfoot. So I'm going to try my best to take it out too. But you know, Jeremy comes in and. He says, you know what? You mess with one arm, I'm going to get you with the other one instead. Oh, yeah, and that's exactly what happened here, Dill. I mean, he starts working Crow over, starts giving him the business. And, you know, again, folks, I just I, I want a preference. You know, you're getting in the ring with a guy like Jeremy Lightfoot. He is a multiple-time world champion, not a brand champion, a world champion champion he has traveled the globe he has traveled all over he trained tons of talent that are still in mainstream wrestling uh such as but not limited to you know matt seidel he trained jeremy lightfoot he has wrestled people such as delirious mischief He's been in the ring with some of the best pound-for-pound wrestlers on the planet Earth. He's trained some of the best pound-for-pound wrestlers on planet Earth. And on top of all of those things, he has won world championships in every company he's stepped foot in. You're in there with a guy like that. And if I'm Aleister Crow, I am going to bring the fight nonstop. And we saw Jeremy Lightfoot pull out a monkey flip. And a monkey flip showing that, yes, Lightfoot might be getting up there at age, but he is going to hang in there with the best of them. I, in my opinion, think Jeremy Lightfoot has got 10 good years left in him, if not more. This man only gets better with time. He's like a fine wine. He's battle-tested. He is the native nightmare. He is Jeremy effing Lightfoot. Oh, yeah. And, you know, to his, to his credit, Crow did what he could. Crow, uh, one, at one point in the match, Crow goes for... What looks to be the setup of his finish? He's got Jeremy in a in a full Nelson. Jeremy comes in, gets him, gets him ready for what you know what Jeremy does best: a light foot driver. And it was a modified light foot driver there, Dilly. Drops him straight down on the back of his head. One, two, three. Your winner of the match, the native nightmare, Jeremy Lightfoot. And you would think all is good and gravy in the CHWA, but Dilly. Tell the people watching what happened next. So as Jeremy has won his match, he's he's you know getting ready to go to the back. He he looks out and sees a car pull up rather fast, and out from that car comes a band. 
banned P.T. Beckham. That week, P.T. Beckham had been banned from the building for safety reasons because of uh, due to some fan fans. And Jeremy or um, P.T. Beckham runs in and attacks Jeremy. Jeremy Jeremy doesn't know what to do, and they start they start brawling. And uh, I call for security to get P.T. out of here because he's banned. He's not supposed to be here. Get him out. And, you know, the the security does their best, and as they're escorting him out, P.T. Beckham just takes them all out and runs back after Jeremy Lightfoot. And and when I tell you this was a fight, ladies and gentlemen, this was a fight. I tried to split it up. I was a casualty in this. I got my face wrung off the... I don't even know how to explain it. The elevated floor that's not padded there in front of our guardrail damn near broke my nose. Thankfully, I, you know, I'm okay, but... Now, our security guard, our head security guard, Mike, at one point got punched in the face. I mean, this was just, this was insane. Of course, PT, insult to injury, putting on the Native Nightmares headdress. But, mm -hmm. you know, the security managed to get PT out of there. Lightfoot did manage to get up to his feet. This crowd was giving PT the business. I'll tell you what, PT is uh, PT's not doing himself any favors. He's not making any friends. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a crazy time at CHWA, man. And the only place you're going to be able to see all this live every Sunday is 127 West MacArthur Drive in Cottage Hills, Illinois. And I'm telling you, man, it's $10 for adults, $5 for children. It is a phenomenal time. Come on out with the wife and the kiddos. Have a good time and watch yourself. The best pro wrestling in the Midwest area. But, Dilly, speaking of the best pro wrestling in the Midwest area, let's talk about as Bruce Buffer would say, the main event of the evening. Because yes. out comes Angelo Grimsley, the dastardly bastard himself, Angelo Grimsley. And he is going one-on-one -on -one with the current reigning CHWA heavyweight champion, Chaos Jester, in the main event for the CHWA championship. Ballsy move of Chaos to put the belt on the line after he just won it. But he is a fighting yeah. champion, and Angelo stepped up to the plate for a championship match. Dilly, let's talk about this match. This match um, actually is a little bit of a callback. You know, uh, Angelo wrestled Chaos Jester for his debut match at From the Ashes almost one year ago to the day. And, you know, it's fitting that while Angelo has been climbing the ranks in CHWA, not so much uh, to hold such a prestigious award as the heavyweight title, but a former tag team champion, at least, uh, going up against Chaos, who has also climbed the ranks, now your current CHWA heavyweight champion. So it's just fitting that we that this match happens, you know, almost one year to the T. A little bit of reunion for Chaos and Angelo. And, uh, I, you know, at first, Angelo comes out by himself. Then slowly, as the match goes on, you notice new foundation members keep coming in. You know, Drew Carter comes in towards the very beginning. Then Mizoku comes out right as Chaos is. And uh, Little Chaos is, you know, doing their, their thing, you know, showing off the belt. I know Sid and Dean showed up at one point in the in this match, but... Just making sure Chaos knows, hey, don't mess up, because I got some, I, I got people backing me up. And let's talk about the fact, you know, little Chaos and big Chaos out there. Little Chaos, so proud of his dad, man. So proud of big Chaos, as we all are. And you know, Sunday was an emotional day for Chaos Jester. I'm not going to say why here, because I don't know if he wants that information out there. But very emotional day for Chaos. Mm -hmm. Had a little extra, had a little extra paint on the body, and uh, putting that CHWA Heavyweight Championship on the line. And I'll tell you this, Dilly, I've watched a lot of Chaos Jester matches, a lot of them. I've been involved in a lot of them, especially when we were a tag team in the Affliction. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, without beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is the best Chaos Jester match I've ever seen. This is the best I've ever seen Chaos Jester in the ring. I think he's the hungriest and the best 
he's ever been. Starting this match off, Angelo goes for a handshake for a callback. Chaos is in zero mood to play those games. Had a feeling Angelo was probably going to turn on him in that handshake. And Chaos jumped the gun and got him himself. Off the ropes, he shoots him in a big boot. This match starts hot and heavy dilly. And let's does. talk about the implications of this match. Let's talk about the fact there's new foundation members out there, left and right. Chaos is in what I would consider hostile territory, hostile water. You know, little chaos is out there jumping up and down, trying to give big chaos the encouragement he needs. The CHWA Heavyweight Championship on the line in the main event. This match was awesome. It was hard hitting. Every time Angelo tried at the start of this match to get chaos off his game he just could not shut chaos down chaos was on fire goes for the chaos theory a bit early on in this match but angelo ever the wise little veteran not veteran but you know what i mean wise little general yeah. that he is manages to get out of the ring and he uses the number game to his advantage he runs around the ring he makes sure mizoku's right in the way goes for a clothesline mizoku ducks and this number game is what I'm talking about. I mean, Angelo's nowhere to be seen. Now Now Chaos is in the face of Drew Carter, taking his eyes off the prize, taking his eyes off the game. But here comes Angelo, ring posts Chaos. This match, what a match, man. This was a stiff match. It really was, you know, and I, I fully agree with you. Chaos Jester, easily his best match I've ever seen. But, you know, Angelo Grimsley doing what he does best, using the numbers against him, using every way that he can to take full advantage. You know, he rings Chaos's bell with the ring post, and then to make sure it keeps going, he rings his bell on the stairs. And I don't know about you, Mr. Exodus, but have you have you been hit by the, by the stairs yet? Man, I have had my face ran into those stairs. I have had my arm slammed into those stairs. Those stairs are unforgiving, man. They Absolutely really are. unforgiving. They're so sharp. Solid steel and serrated. <laughs> and I wish I was joking. The tops of those stairs have a lot of points. And Angelo's like, you know what? This looks like a nice bouncing playground for Chaos's head. Then throws him back in the ring, gets up on the top rope and goes, cool, I think my elbow can now bounce off your head. And just make sure that Chaos is, is down for the count to try and get this belt off of him. I mean, just furious right hands. Chaos, though, ever the crafty veteran, manages to get out of it, grabs the leg, picks him up. And I mean, Chaos is just at this point, here comes the choke slam. Big callback to the original match they had it from the ashes in April of 2021. Big choke slam, but it wasn't enough to put Angelo away. Mm -mm. No. And, it, and you know, here's the thing Chaos, Jester on top of his game right now. He is absolutely at the peak of his game. He is the heavyweight champion of CHWA. And I mean, these two, these two know each other, man. They have history. They know each other inside and out. They know, it's like a mental game of chess in there, Dilly, especially when you get two guys like this that just know each other so well. Yes. It's almost scary how, it's almost scary to think about how well these two know each other. And this match, I just, I'm not going to qu quit saying it throughout the rest of this show. This match is so good. It is such a good wrestling match. It is the best match I've seen Chaos have. It's the best match I've seen Angelo have. I am so, I love this match. I just love this match. I do it. I, I do too. And you know, uh, you know, Angelo doing what he can, you know, fighting off Chaos, giving him a nice, it looks like a low super kick to the face while he's laying down. And as chaos is laying there, you see Drew Carter grab the rope, try and keep him from, from breaking the count. And, you know, then you see Drew Carter get up, distract the ref as Angelo is, you know, ra you know, wrenching chaos on that bottom rope, you know, taking full advantage. And then they decide to go in for a uh, double, double kick and decide to kick and, you know, kick each other. And, you know, they both lay there and try and try and gather their 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 surroundings of what exactly is going on here. Oh, I I think I think. Hello. There you go. There we go. Sorry about that. Again, this microphone is not my friend, but. Dilly, you've mentioned it before. We're going to mention it again here. The numbers game by the new foundation 
smart tactics, smart wrestling on their part. But you know, the thing about chaos is, I have watched chaos get hit with chairs, put through tables. I've watched him get thrown through a wall. Years ago, I watched Chaos not only get put through a plate of glass, a legitimate plate of glass, in the same match, I watched him get hit with a flamethrower. Got set on fire, and he continued Mm -hmm. to fight back. So, Chaos is very much used to getting beat on and beat on and beat on. He's very, very tough. Very resilient, and, you know, case it... Case in point, you know, something we we didn't haven't really addressed yet is this match went on for almost 20 minutes. I don't think I've seen Chaos wrestle 20 minutes before. You know, he's usually pretty quick. You know, he's very he's pretty talented enough that he can get the job done in under 10. But this one, it seemed like him and Angelo just couldn't figure out you know how how to put each other down and for 20 roughly 20 minutes they just ugh, the the uh, we can't say it enough this match was so good i uh, you you just have to go and watch this match you go go to the youtube page turn on your recent uh thursday night throwdown the the uh the uh, 14th of uh april and and go watch this main event because these two just put on one hell of a match. And you know, Dilly, we we've said it so many times about how good this match is. And these two, I mean, they left nothing. I and listen, I don't like Angelo Grimsley. I will never like Angelo Grimsley. But Angelo Grimsley is nothing. Nothing. Neither of these men have anything to be ashamed of. Neither of these men have anything. They left nothing to be desired they gave it everything both men this was a fight this was a heavyweight championship match this is what chwa title matches should be this is what champions should fight like this is what challengers should fight like these two have set the bar and i don't know how it gets raised i really don't chaos and and angelo every punch they hit each other with was it was brutal as you know dilly after the show went off the air, both of them were being attended to by our medics. I believe, if I remember correctly, Chaos had to get some stitches in his cheek. And I believe Angelo had to get, I think it was right above his eyebrow, he had to get it was either glue or a stitch or two. Because both men, connecting with rights and lefts, hitting elbows, kicking each other in the face. This match was just... This match was just incredible. This is it, just, I cannot sing the praises of this match enough. This was incredible. It really it was. It was a sellout. And for all the insiders, for all the people in the in the wrestling business, and for all the fans out there that know insider terms, it was a sellout at the monitor. Absolute it, sellout at the monitor that night. It really was. And and you know what, Exodus, I uh, I think I think I'll say this now. I think this match so good. I I I'd be willing to. Bet it's going to be in the, in the can in the candidacy for top matches of the year. I if it's really not, do. If it's not, I'm not going. That's totally fine. And you know, something something w- that you know we don't see too often, uh, especially from a- Angelo Grimsley, is you know to prove just a point of how desperate and how crazy this match really was. Angelo Grimsley. Throws Chaos Jester off the top rope with a superplex. Just trying anything to get Chaos to ta- to 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 get the pin, get the belt off of Chaos. Chaos kicks out. So that's a desperation move that you don't see too often. Whenever it does, it usually doesn't end well. And and Dilly. The scary thing was about that superplex, Angelo purposely held Chaos at an angle where it was his upper shoulders and back of the head that hit the mat first. That could have broke his neck, that could have paralyzed him, that could have been the end of Chaos Jester. But Chaos reverses the rip cord knee, I don't know how he's up on his feet, hits a Chaos Theory, but he just, he's so worn out at this point, we're, we're in deep waters as they say. Goes for the cover, one, doesn't even get the two count before Drew Carter pulls out Jeremy the ref, gives him the boots, gives him the business. Here comes Dean Roberts, here comes Mizoku into the ring. They are just putting the boots to chaos, beating chaos down. 
Drew Carter tells, he's barking orders. You know, this is something I did, I did like to, I did like to point out Sunday in the locker room is Drew Carter was barking out orders during this. They get the most prestigious championship in Midwest Wrestling, CHWA Championship. Mizoku hands it off to Angelo, who cranks that some bitch back and cranks Drew Carter in the face. Chaos was able to move out of the way. And interestingly enough, Dilly, the Mizoku doesn't move. This is something we all notice. The Mizoku doesn't move. The pinfall happens, and Mizoku just slides out of the ring. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on with them ever since the thing that happened with the parasite happened earlier in the night, but nonetheless, one, two, three, after the chaos theory, your winner and still CHWA heavyweight champion, chaos jester, but there is no rest for the weary. There's no rest for the wicked dilly because even though the match is over, the new foundation come in to do what they do. And that is the numbers game and to start putting the boots to chaos. They start beating on him. Mm -hmm. And nonetheless, Dilly, here comes one of the only people out of the back that should be coming out of the back here. Damian freaking Blackwell. We're paying the favor that chaos gave him. Huge clothesline to Dean Roberts. Knocks him on his head. Damian making his way around the ring, bad knee and all. Him and Drew Carter earlier in the night had a big fight. They start to jump him. Chaos manages to rip Esau off, smashes his head into the mat. I mean, Drew Carter gets hit with a flatliner in the dead center of the ring, throws Mizoku out. Both men standing tall here. Both guys, a lot of mutual respect here. Uh, You know, it's nice to finally see two guys wrestling for a championship and the main cause of mutual respect. Both men clear the ring, standing tall, but Dilly, Dilly, out next comes Sean Valiant with a steel chair, and he just smashes Damian Blackwell in the back with the chair. Big kick to the gut. And then a big power bomb to Chaos Jester. And the thing is, Dilly, it almost looked like Damien seen him coming. But I don't think Damien actually saw him. I think he heard him, turned slightly, didn't see anything, went to turn back around to make sure the new foundation wasn't coming back in the ring. And Sean Valiant got lucky, man. He got lucky that he wasn't seen. And he got just, I, he obliterated Blackwell with that chair. He laid he out really Chaos did. that power bomb. And, Dilly, the last thing that we see here at the night is what we might see it from the ashes in two weeks. Well, Mm -hmm. week and a half. Sean Valiant with the heavyweight championship raised high above his head. Dilly. Chaos and Damian Blackwell laying on on their mats. What a goddamn show this was, Dilly. What top to bottom. What a show. This this was an ins- insane show. It really was. You know, lots of action, lots of crazy ups and downs, twist turns. And, you know, I can't imagine how you get a better TV show than what we got this past Sunday. I mean, just, it was a treat. Uh, it was an absolute treat. You know, we've got the best cameramen and women on planet Earth. We've got, in my opinion, the best commentary team, especially especially now that David Wolf is back from his slight vacation. Dilly, what a show. What an incredible night for not just CHWA, but just wrestling in general. What an incredible show. I mean, all the matches were good. The crowd was hot. Damn near sellout crowd. Once again at 127 West MacArthur Drive. Dilly. I don't know if I have much more to say, but I will say this, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, make sure to do that. Go to Facebook, search up CHWA, Kata Chills Wrestling Alliance, to stay up to date with all the updates and all the videos that we post on there. A lot of content on that page, show updates, flyers, etc. And make sure, if you have not already done so, go to Patreon. Find Kata Chills Wrestling Alliance. Click that for life tier. Because I'm telling you right now, the pay-per-views at the end of the month, every last Sunday of the month, they are the crim of the crim of Midwest Wrestling. They are so fun. It's so infect. The energy from the show is just infectious. That in and of itself is worth $10. It's it re- worth that, but it's worth the subscription price. Click that button. 
it really is. And, you know, especially if you haven't gotten into the Patreon just yet, what a great month to get into it with a with a with with a, a, a crazy pay-per-view like we've got coming up, you know, from the ashes. It's our one year anniversary since reopening the door since COVID. And already we've got a stacked card. Our your main event is Chaos Jester and Sean Valiant and Damian Blackwell in a triple threat match. We've got the Voodoo King facing off against Harlock Cross. We have Vicious Victoria going against Sophia Sombra. Uh, and that's just that's just three three of the matches in the in in this uh pay-per-view you are not going to want to miss that if you are not at 127 west macarthur drive cottage hills illinois 62018 you have have to watch it on patreon.com slash chwa to even watch it because it ain't here on youtube i'll tell you that this is not going to be one that we have here. It's only on Patreon, or you watch it live in the building Sunday, April 24th. And I'll tell you, if you're thinking about coming out to this show, I only have one question for you. Why not? At this point, I don't think the card can get better. I don't think there's a better card that CHWA can produce. I don't think there's a better card that professional wrestling can produce. What an incredible show we have lined up. I don't have much more to say, but the last thing I will say is this, and I promised that I was not going to go off on any tangents on this show. I promised I would be a good boy. I promised it to ring announcer Dilly. I promised it to management. There's one thing I got to say, and I got to say it right here, and I got to say it right now for the entire world to hear. CHWA for life. You don't like it? Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. I love CHWA. I love the CHWA Nation. I love all the rowdy, rambunctious fans that show up every Sunday to 127 West MacArthur Drive. I love our YouTube audience. I love our Facebook fans. It's great to have you. It's great to produce content for you. Dilly, do me a favor. I'm going to hit you with a wrestling term. Send these people home happy, Dilly. I'm going to send them home happy. If you want to be a part of this nation, go follow us on Facebook. Go subscribe to us on YouTube. Hit the like button, comment, share, go to patreon.com slash chwa, support us all that you can, do everything. I think we've got an Instagram, Cottage Hills Wrestling Alliance, do what you can, follow us. There's plenty of wrestlers to follow all over your social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, <laughs> the amount of stuff that you can follow every, everybody at is just insane, but you know. Like like Mr. X just said, send them home happy, so we'll send you home happy. This has been Radio Recap with Ring Announcer Dilly and Chris Exodus. And for you all at home, you'll know this from the show, we are out. Oh.